Yeah. Bitch, that shirt is awesome. Isn't it nice? I God. saw it and I was like, it's kind of worth it. Yeah. <sighs> Poop. Smile. Poop butt. Smile. <laughs> this feels really good for me. I don't know if it feels Dude, good for you. You wearing that shirt? I do whatever like you want. To just give you a little ba back tickle. Oh. What do you, is this like? What do you mean? I sound great. Like you sound good oh. in our ears. <gasps> Angelic. Like I see voice. angels around you. <sighs> mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Whoa, wait, wait, what? Welcome to Spinal Tap, episode five. Yeah, girl. I am a doctor. 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 These guys are 11. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Did we just become best friends? Yep! The skeleton ran out of shampoo in the shower. 1.21 gigawatts! This is the house of learned doctors. You're not a doctor. What's what's on tap today? Cheers. Cheers. We got uh, some North Fusion. This smells good right North off the... Canico. Here you go. Um, Cheers. Mm. Air cheers. Hmm. Lemon balm. Yeah. One Salute. Of my, Somebody you know, Zach? One of my buddies from chiropractic school had started this company. God, so I told him, like, hey, man, we're going to we're gonna Can sponsor this. Can I try this. a sip of that one? Yeah. Cool. You Maybe know, just hunting for those sponsors, really. We're throwing out lots of Mike, lures. Mike, hey, come on, man. Make it happen. This is probably the first your podcast that they're sponsored on. Mm -hmm. So that's this a big deal. This is a little lighter. It doesn't have as much of a punch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so North Fusions, they this is a CBD. It's not marijuana. Maybe well, it is. It Don't worry, moms. My, yeah, especially my mom. She's like, marijuana CBD? On camera, <laughs> um, Zach? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're so unprofessional. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but they also have THC, mm. which maybe for a future episode. Yeah, we could maybe patients. get into that. Please, bowl. I, I after, after would midnight. love to be invited for yeah. that mm -hmm. episode. Okay. Mm -hmm. we can, we'll see we how can this talk. one goes Spinal first. Yeah. yeah. We'll give so. you some notes and then we'll... <laughs> We'll circle back. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to Spinal Tap, episode five. We got myself, Dr. Zach Mashinsky. To the right of me, Dr. Mitch Evenson. That is me. And today we have a very special guest, a woman that has our hearts. Oh. And we love her, the happy healer herself. Hello. Brittany Graft. Hey. Welcome. I'm here. Brit. Yeah. Also I also as... love you guys too. Yeah. Aww. Very much. It's mutual. We love her. So she is the one and only happy healer and your website could be off, but you've been in, I mean, you've been practicing for 17 plus years. It's probably Not, more than that. 19 years now. 19 years. Wow. Yeah. 19 I'll, years I'll in practice. That. It's amazing. Cause you're like, what? 20 years old. <laughs> I mean, I know I look 20, but you're I feel 20 pretty too. close to 40 at this point. Do you feel like an old soul? Richie's still the oldest. Um, <laughs> no, I think uh, we were talking. I think we're the same age. Oh, when's your birthday? <laughs> I turned 40 in November 18th. Scorpio. You're older than I am. Just by a little by bit. A little. So I'm the elder in the room, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'd like that to be acknowledged. So would you like to speak first, mm -hmm. and then we just... You get to smoke the pipe first. <laughs> yes. We Don't should have me. a peace pipe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like a talking talisman. Oh, I like that idea. I like how we're planning the future <laughs> in the present. <laughs> Everybody, ground yourself. Presence yes. right ground. now. Yeah. Take your shoes off. I won't do that to you. Yeah. Oh, keep a little gross. <laughs> Keep but easy. Brittany, you can, I mean, you can talk about yourself, but you know, I was looking at your website and I think your mission statement is a great one where you talk about, um, using your intuition to help people obviously be empowered, which is a buzzword for a lot of people, for sure. but kind of mm -hmm. find their, you know, find themselves, you know, spirit, body and mind, and you do it so exceptionally well and everybody loves you. Hence why you're so busy. Oh my God. I have like, been trying to get in with you for oh, yeah. three months. It's the weightless <laughs> baby. You get in. Yeah. You just gotta be patient. That's hard. So it's hard. Welcome, welcome Thank to you. Spinal Tap, and mm -hmm. um, just kind of give us a. I mean, we can kind of give an intro of, you know, how we met, how we got I to be in the same that. practice, but Origin also stories like, what got you, you know, part of your journey. And 40, 40 minutes is going to be nearly enough to explain that, but I'll kind of let you touch the, the high points. So take the take the mic um so i was always like intuitive i remember being like four years old and sitting in the grass and like going god why did you pick me to be here like mm. what am i like why did you pick me <clears throat> and you know at that time i remember like it just being a really natural conversation but now as i've grown and i've had kids of my own i'm like 
that's not like super typical of a four year old. Four year olds mm-hmm. don't ask this question. Like I was literally contemplating everything ex existential. And it was mostly self talk, or did you have these conversations with others? Um, no, I think it was really self talk and like in my head. Did you have friends? Uh, yes. Imaginary? No. Mm. But I was a sleepwalker. I didn't mean like oh, which yeah. I have do friends. <laughs> I kind of was no, like I didn't have friends. <laughs> I was an outcast. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think that when I look back, that those were big differences for me, and I also. I have the ability to see auras and angels. And I remember seeing figures when I was little, like white beings going past my doorway. And I'd get up and I'd go out and look and there'd be nothing there. And it was nothing I really ever really shared with anyone because it was just my own experience, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I went into school and I'm really neurodiverse. So I'm dyslexic, I have dysgraphia, dyscalculia. An auditory processing disorder and You're ADD. In good company. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Very, very uh, much good company. Good. What's the new one we know about? Misophonia. Have you heard that one before? Yes. So I have a patient who enlightened me about this, but I was like, oh, that makes total mm-hmm. sense now. It does make sense because yeah. it's like. Bring for, your mic just a touch close. For a lot of people, <clears throat> it's like a real thing. Yeah. It's a real thing. Do you have it? Oh, I'm. I don't Gosh. even want to speak it. Yeah. Well, I will try not to chew yeah. around you. Because mm, your skin will crawl. No, it literally feels like the sound is in my body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. But that also, to me, that just means you're a highly sensitive individual. Thank you. Really? You are very sensitive. Yeah, you guys both are sensitive. You have more than me. I don't know. I've. It might be pretty equal. I'm very sensitive. Don't talk to me like are that. Are you guys... <laughs> gauging sensitivity because i'd like to throw my hat in the ring oh richie yes. sit Rich, in the corner tell us fudge <laughs> off take a nap please i haven't us. slept in two days yeah <laughs> can we unpack this at one point oh boy <laughs> i would love to unpack that at some so point so uh, you kind of touched on this but like when you were a little person mm-hmm. you were four and you had these experiences like when was there like a moment when you realized like hey this isn't normal for everybody i think you were kind of mm-hmm. talking about that well c- kind of like when I was in high school, I never really got busted at parties because I always would get feelings. <laughs> this is and, not good. And like, I'm telling you, like, I was like thinking about that earlier today and I was like, hmm. dang, like in a way that was my own intuition, like me using it for my advantage, like right? Like you would leave. Totally. Like I would or leave, like, oh, I would leave going... or not go oh, or sure. not participate or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and then I graduated high school and I went into college Where'd you go? I went to Oshkosh in Wisconsin. They are they were at the time the only college that had a program for dyslexics. Hmm. So that's how I landed there. I went there for about a year and a half and it just wasn't it wasn't the right place. So I went home and I worked at a daycare I'd been working at through high school and I just needed to take a minute. And one morning I woke up and I heard a voice say, You should go to massage school. Is that the first time you had heard that? Yes. Mm-hmm. I did have like a calling to massage school, but I was very caught up in proving that I was smart. So I went to college. Oh, yeah. mm. um, so I didn't listen at the time. So I heard that and I was like, well, I'm at kind of a weird crossroads. I went upstairs and I was like, mom, I think I want to go to massage school. She was like, great. <laughs> something. Yes. Just do Some, anything. Just yeah. something. Get off the damn and, couch. <laughs> <laughs> and I signed up and I... I fell in love. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I would say at that school, my gifts started to emerge Mm -hmm. and started to kind of grow Mm -hmm. and turn into something where I was like, huh. And my instructors would be like, you're very different than the other students. Did did you like that, hearing that? Or were you like, oh, that's overwhelming to hear? um, Join the club. I didn't really know what it, (laughs) I didn't really know what it meant. Mm -hmm. Mm Like you didn't belong. Yeah, it's hard. I'm sure. Like, like I don't belong, or like yeah, I, I have a higher like, power. Right. Like, like my, I, my Jedi level. <laughs> can yeah, you please can. rate my Jedi What's level? What's your midichlorian count? <laughs> At least a two. Yeah. I don't know if that scale is true. I feel like mine might be a ten. Mm. Come join me. Yeah. Um. So, 
then I started practicing massage and everything kind of took off and I was able to build a business no matter where I went, which were, was a good sign. Where did you mm-hmm. start after massage? Was that lifetime right away? Nope. I actually went to a chiropractic clinic and I had never, I was never raised in a chiropractic clinic. And this guy was like all f- full of sorts of different crazy stuff like mm-hmm. lasers, oh. Cool all these, laser baths. yeah, like all these Sharks different with lasers. Sharks with lasers. <laughs> so I was there. Then I went to a spa, and then I landed at Lifetime, where I was there for five years. Was that like your best experience out of the first three, or was it just out of convenience and? Um, Lifetime was a good experience. I grew a business wherever I went, so it wasn't like that was never an issue. Um, but I liked my experience at Lifetime. Mm-hmm. I just outgrew it, mm-hmm. and there was just nowhere for me to go. But I love that I started at that chiropractic clinic because that really opened my eyes to a lot of different things that I'd never mm. been exposed to. Like what? It's cool. Just like even supplements. Mm. And um, I met a guy there who ended up training me in cranial sacral therapy. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just like even like machines that worked with fascia, kind of like a Theragun, but this was like, you know, forever ago Mm -hmm. yeah like so like the first types of theraguns and just how he treated and acupuncture and he did like these foot detox but i mean Mm -hmm. you name it it was happening there yeah it's strange i mean that's good it was strange but i was so into it it. yeah Yeah. no it opened your eyes to a bunch of stuff it really did um and then i went to lifetime because i had a daughter or i had a baby and then i I needed day hours because mm-hmm. I wanted to be with her at night. And so that's mm-hmm. how I got cool. it at Lifetime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm here. Right. And in, a, in a blink of an eye. <laughs> right. Exactly. And we'll, t- we'll talk about that. But you're actually leaving our space. <gasps> I am. Which is sad. But. I, we share I, space. But. I cried about it when yeah. I told the boys. Yeah, good. Yeah. I didn't. But it's it's all it's all good stuff. Yeah, Mitch is like, don't let the door the one time hit like, you on the way out. Good, see ya. <laughs> you went into the bathroom and cried. <laughs> right, cool and that, I think that growth is just awesome. Like, yeah, it's been calling. I was actually talking to Richie about it before we started. It's been, I've wanted to grow for so long and expand, but it never quite. It, it just like wouldn't happen. And I think I had some things and some hurdles to get over first before the universe was like, okay, now. Mm. And the door's open. So here we go. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Um, I would say like the question I was, I've asked you before, but how does, how is your technique, your skill, you know, change throughout those experiences and kind of where is it at today? And what do you like? What do you like to see? What do you not like to see? You know, like those details. Yeah. You know, it's like so funny because when you go to massage school and I think this is totally valid, it's like a 50 minute protocol, five minutes here, five minutes there, you know, and that just teaches you how to walk through you the body. A playbook. It's a playbook. Mm-hmm. But what's really fun is that it's evolved into, you know, my own playbook mm. and no massage is the same. And I really do enjoy doing like therapeutic work. So I I include gua sha and cupping and CBD in all my sessions. Can you Um, define gua sha? Okay, gua sha. Now, gua sha is amazing. And it's not like the same gua sha that you would use on your face, which is like all over TikTok and Instagram. This is a metal scraping tool. And it breaks up adhesions. Is it like Graston? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, yeah. It's okay. Graston. It. Gua sha is the Chinese. Yeah. So gua sha is like the Chinese. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, and awesome. they didn't use stainless steel. They use like. Buffalo bone. Yes. Mm-hmm. Was it like. Uh, I was actually it? trained Let's with buffalo bone. Let's cool. do it. Yeah. But I really ended up liking the metal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Well, there's some resiliency there. Yeah. It just felt easier to clean and mm-hmm. it just felt like it made more sense. And mm-hmm. it's actually a really beautiful tool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I love using that because it's. <clears throat> It's super effective and can just rip through a stuck area and get you more mobility really quick, Mm -hmm. way faster than my hands could. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just incorporate all that. And then I do a lot with uh, cupping and I include energy work in all of my massages because I'm 
you know, we're very physical beings, but we're also spiritual and we're also emotional beings. And I'm just not the type of therapist who focuses on the physical. I'm like, okay, so what happened? What happened prior to you not being able to turn your neck? Mm -hmm. Well, nothing. And I'm like, okay, well, let's dig a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. What's your life been like? Yeah. And there's always a stress or emotional component. Yeah. And so bringing in the energy work to address that. And then I blend cranial sacral therapy with my energy work and just try to put people into that in between sleep and awake. Mm, and nice it's a place. really beautiful space. Speaking Richie, of you're in that space right now. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. That's what? more of a violent. Did that giraffe just talk it? <laughs> 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 how's my how's my scraping right now and that's really? great with the the it's energy better. work and we see it we've talked about it before just how um emotions create physical stress on human bodies and we've oh, talked about gosh, it. and like totally. we you know we'll send people to you of like hey you have some deeper emotional stuff that you need to work through otherwise it becomes a roadblock for us to work in the physical state of a human and i absolutely love, like, as a patient having the ability to like right across the hall or now a couple mm -hmm. doors down mm -hmm. like because you and you guys talk about it all the time we have limits we know what we're great at and then we're gonna refer yeah and to have somebody of your caliber just next door is it's like, huge God, it's a game changer. so exciting like <clears throat> well and it's like super cool to always have a practitioner who's like this isn't my like this isn't my wheelhouse but i have someone for you mm -hmm. and i think for the patient client they can look at you and go they know what I need and are willing to like send me somewhere else to get me better. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's a true caring for them. Mm -hmm. And you're totally right. Like, like I can't put a rib back in, mm -hmm. but I know when a rib is out mm -hmm. and I'm like, you're going to need to go see the boys or, and maybe see them three times in a row because mm -hmm. sometimes a rib pops back out. Yeah. Um, and that collaboration and chiropractic and energy work and massage together is just really the full package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's super cool. And the energy work has always intrigued me in like conversations that we've had too. And just the association that we see like with different yeah. like complaints and how it relates with like, oh, they're having financial stress or they're having marriage stress or they're having like work stress and where it shows up in the body is just fascinating. Oh, it's just so it's the body is always trying to protect you to keep you going. So Trauma is too much too fast. And sometimes when it is too much too fast, they're like, I'm going to put it in my low back mm -hmm. and I'm going to hold there because I got to grit and keep going because mm -hmm. we don't really provide a lot of opportunities to slow down in our mm -hmm. world. And your body's just trying to keep you going. If, you know, for if there's viewers out there that are like, well, how do I know if I have this? It, how do I know if I need emotional work? Like, you do. I think you right. do. Energy work. Sorry, not emotional work. Energy work. Like, same. What thing. are some? You know, what are some like maybe signs that they would see? And like you said, everybody does. But for those like more curious about it, and if it's a right fit for them, like, what, what would they need to look at, or what would they need to see or feel, like, or just follow their intuition? I think if you feel called, that's like the first and foremost. Like, if there's a calling, like. I even I kind of want to experience that or I'm curious what that is or I feel like I have intuition. How do I get more in tune with that? Mm -hmm. um, another telltale sign is just being in a trauma body. So whether you're in a fight or flight, freeze, fawn, whatever response that you're in, if you find yourself continually in it or continually stuck in it, mm -hmm. that is such and like you can't get out of it. You, you can't like, get oh, out. I'm gonna go for a run. You know, like we talk with Kelly. Or like, like you I'm just go keeps, for a run and you can't. You can't. Like you, you just, can't escape it, or you just slip into it every day, mm -hmm. or you you shut down. Or I like to ask people if they feel out of their body. Mm -hmm. So what that might be like is, you know, you're not anchored, and you're you're exist. It's almost like a like a slight form of disassociation. Mm. And when people get up from the table, they're like. Now I know what you mean. I was out of my body. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um. So there's just so many signs. But I also really think like when you experience grief, um, any sort of trauma, like don't wait for it to settle in and cause injury and cause pain in other ways that you don't need it. Just get on the table and 
nail it out. And that's yeah. why it's also so crucial to develop a relationship with a practitioner that you you trust. So you know, because life is going to hand you stuff and there's times where you're going to need more care than other times. But at least have somebody on your team that's going to be there for you instead of waiting until five years where you have an autoimmune or you have adrenal burnout mm -hmm. or who know you know whatever's going to evolve from not addressing those issues yeah procrastination is the thief <laughs> of health mm. oh. i mean there's a lot of thieves should write that out there. on the wall that should be on the wall somewhere. i have a no, question for all three of you um it just came to me and i was sleeping just mm. while you guys were talking and <laughs> he was taking a nap <laughs> I, uh, just so how do you um individually in your in your modalities treat or approach um trauma or emotion wrapped in physical trauma right so like i i think of myself and i have a bunch of like very traumatic injuries and there is emotion stuck in there 100 percent. and i've worked on them over years and stuff but still there and comes out so how do you how do you approach that do you look for it um and then like, do you work together to yeah. accomplish that? I'll start because mine's going to be an easy answer. Okay. My first thing, because I don't deal in that realm as much, I'm aware of it. But with that, it's trying to create awareness for the patient. Like, hey, did you ever have like a really bad accident? And I love that. It might take them a little bit and they might be like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, tell me more about it. Yeah, and just having them, I think just having them talk about it is like, that's that's kind of where I leave it, yeah. and then if it's something like heavily layered, it's like send them to Brit. Right. Or, yeah, but that's so beautiful because you're not imposing on them; you're allowing them to wake up themselves. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. So that's my that's my route. That's yeah, my tactic. I think that's tactic. similar because you know we know that traumas are wrapped up emotionally, and sometimes that's hard for patients to even articulate. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to like verbally talk it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. They might have this engram in their brain, like, oh, like your grass memory, like you probably can smell the grass, you can feel it, you can do all that stuff in your mind. But to like speak it, that's super hard to do, I think, as like humans. Mm -hmm. It is super hard, um, and we often uh, downplay the trauma. Mm -hmm. Yep. So like, we. Nah, that's not big well, deal. Yeah. And to downplay, I think we both do this. You know, we tell patients this is like, you know, having them discuss it and let them know, like, Hey, this is a safe space. Like, totally. Go for it. Like, mm -hmm. shut the door. Mm -hmm. Have a box of tissues ready if we need to. We won't make fun of you at all. Yeah, right. and like, let them know that <laughs> like this is a safe space, but also like this is these are normal. Mm -hmm. Like, these are normal emotions based mm -hmm. off your experience. And it's like totally normal to feel emotion when you talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like the crying is really just your body trying to regulate and mm -hmm. move the energy out. Right. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It's yeah. an energy leak. It is an energy leak. Through your eyes. I'm like, let it happen. <laughs> Sometimes people get a little teary eyed and it's okay. I didn't, I didn't Mitch, are you going to cry yet? Mitch has never cried. I've never cried on this podcast. <laughs> Except 20 minutes into well, the first episode. Br yeah, Brittany hasn't seen the first episode. He it was cries. great. It was a beautiful story. It was. It was, it was a good was really story. Did you story. cry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. You're going stone cold right now. <laughs> I'm high as hell. <laughs> it's a CBD. You guys are still yeah. sipping on your drinks and yeah. I'm just getting you just weird. It. So, <laughs> so what about our, you, Britt? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, so I would agree with the bringing awareness in, um, but I tend to gauge that on where the client is at. So my clients who've seen me for a while who are like a little bit more like attuned to what I do because I receive messages when I'm working. Mm -hmm. So it could be like sitting in the chair before you get on my table where I get information and your guides or angels, whomever you want to associate with, will be like, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll be like, um, did so-and-so? And they're like, yeah, how did you know that? And then that leads into it. Now, also sometimes when I'm working on the body and I'm hands on, then I'll get messages and then I'll bring it up that way too. Sure. Which it's more like intuitive led. Yeah. Um, so it's like a little bit different than maybe what they do, but in the same realm. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. I do is a, I am led. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My room is all about being led. I don't question what where I'm led. I don't question what I do. 
but you have that skill set to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ours, yeah. Where ours is more like we try to lead them to people like you to yeah. be led. Yeah. <laughs> to be led. I think in a parallel, like our skills as chiropractors, like sometimes we like Dr. Fargo, he, he'll always be like, don't talk. Let me figure it out for you. Hmm. And so like that comes with time. But for us, like we have like what we do is we're checking certain things and we're not like asking the patient, but we're letting their body guide us a bit. Yeah. So I think there's there's some parallel to that. Hmm. And there are some times when you like feel someone's hip or you do like a, it's like, is your low back really bad today? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like, Ugh. I'm telling you, <laughs> like, there's nothing more fun than those experiences because people, they just want to be seen and they just want to be heard. And sometimes, like you had said earlier, they can't explain it. Mm -hmm. And so when that intuition kicks in and you're able to provide that, I think that's one of, like, one of the reasons healers are gifted with that is because it just makes it easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 What a cool superpower. Good question. Thank you. Richie. Yeah. Solid question. Yeah. Now be quiet. Good. Take now a, take, take a, a nap. nap. Who are you? I'm your I'm your healthcare provider. <laughs> it's professional advice, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Go take a nap. Sure. I have a question. So like post treatment, like what's your like go to recommendations for your for your clients, patients? Like, okay, we just did this whole thing. We unwound you. Now go serve the world. And they come back. Mm. <laughs> Cause that's a big problem with us is like, okay, we adjusted you. We'll see you next time. They're just wound up, you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. So my biggest thing is acclimation time. Mm. Um, take the long way home. Stop and get yourself the tea that you like. A blizzard like, at Dairy Queen? I mean... Or a, a North Fusion CBD. Yeah. Oh. Oh. A little do, plug. Do some drugs before you yeah. get home. <laughs> and then cook your family dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Mac and hot dogs. <laughs> Ew. Um, I think acclimation time is like the biggest thing and just allowing yourself to re-enter mm -hmm. because like when you come into my space you're like i feel like they're in your spirit body and then we go back out and you're then you're in your human mm -hmm. and there's we're two separate parts in my eyes mm -hmm. and so just allowing them to like merge the two together mm -hmm. and to go slow but i always recommend like epsom salt baths like any sort of little self-care you can do in between appointments to keep it going yeah. mm -hmm. but also if people aren't consistent there's yeah. They're, like we can only help them so much. Mm -hmm. they I have like to, the acclimation yeah. time. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. the ac that's like one of the reasons. Like not one of well, yeah, one of the reasons I wanted my own office is because I want a space for that yeah. to acclimate in, but then to also acclimate out. Because if you just flooded a ton of mm -hmm. emotions, you might be wiped out. Yeah. And sometimes when people first receive energy work, they almost feel like a little drunk when they get off the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of like, I'm good, but I'm feeling like all sorts of weird. And I was like, mm -hmm. you're in a totally different frequency. Yeah. Your body has to acclimate now. So let's go. Yeah. yeah. Let's go have a seat. And it's, you know, historically in chiropractic, you know, early chiropractic, like you would get adjusted and you'd go in a dark room for 15 minutes. Stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we should do that with your room. I know. That I honestly like some fully picture, support. Have this. a picture of yeah. you doing like a pose of some kind, like. And it's kind of interesting because I'll recommend that to people. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you need some acclimation time. But there's other people that, you know, if it's less emotional, it's more physical. It's like get out and move. Mm -hmm. Like go, go for play. a walk. Yep. Versus like go sit in a dark room. At, you can acclimate through movement, mm -hmm. yeah. Especially if you're in like you know Think nature. About people just sitting all day. And it's just like. Get adjusted and go back to work. Jesus, what's yeah, what's the point? We shouldn't have just doctor notes. Doctor notes. They got adjusted. They can't work today. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Just like hand idea. them out. But that's how I felt like when we first worked, mm -hmm. because it was like I had to get up and go and do stuff. I was like, I just want to sit here for mm. a bit and just digest. After I did energy work on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cause it's like, how do you just it's like a slap in the face? Well, like <laughs> And sometimes it can be a really psychedelic experience, which is hella cool mm -hmm. uh, i had a client this week who was like that was so crazy like during it i was in space and then i like landed on a black velvet pillow and i sunk in and i just oh, felt wow. held 
Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's awesome. beautiful. Those mushrooms really worked before the <laughs> yeah. treatment. You don't need drugs, just come see me. <laughs> yeah. right. And like, how do then I go, okay, cool, bye. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's put that in our journal. Yeah. We'll talk about it next time. <laughs> like, I think sometimes people need a little time to sober up. Oh God, let's have Seriously. an acclimation space. I think you guys are onto something. Let's do it. I know. Mm-hmm. The let's acclimation just, space is huge. Like think, a hammock. I think we buy that Ooh. space in between us. Just buy them out, and then let's just, and then let's create a tunnel yes. underground, a big velvety black say. blanket and or just pillow. Push, push them down like a little slide. I do think a, a, like pillow. a hamster tube <laughs> connection. I love this. Just hot. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go just over there. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. One oh my got god. stuck. We have a really long broom. Oh. Push them along. I like it. I, I think it'd be really great. I think we just it, solved awesome. all of our problems. Well, we got a few more minutes. We yeah, got some yeah. time. Are there are there things that you would like to just communicate with patients? And we'll we'll get in like you don't have to talk about like how they find you. We can talk about that. But like, is there anything that you'd like to just tell you know our people watching, anybody that's mm-hmm. curious about what you do? Our fifty subscribers. Okay, yes. fifty two. I'm gonna go with my intuition on this one. Yeah, Love of it. course. Why wouldn't you? Um, exactly. <laughs> so, I want to talk quickly quickly about building a recipe for wellness Mm -hmm. and how your recipe can shift and change. But you're going to have your core ingredients and that might mean seeing the boys, energy work, and exercise. And those are your core things, right? And then you might weave the salt and pepper into your recipe and that might look like you might need acupuncture for a while and that's okay. And you might actually need to see a therapist for a while and that's okay. And to really focus on like building yourself like a team or your recipe for wellness and living your life by that Mm -hmm. because it's not going to be one appointment it's not one adjustment it's not one session with me that's going to fix you and you're constantly going to continually get broken because that's just life Mm -hmm. so see the healers put the effort in Mm -hmm. and invest in yourself i like that because like literally if you heal and you care for yourself so many doors will open for you. Mm -hmm. But if you stay stuck and stagnant, nothing's changing. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I like that. I like the team thought too, like you have your arsenal of humans. It's an arsenal. It really is. And those touch points matter. And that's like, people are like, oh, what do we do? Like, why don't you come in once a month? Just because. Okay. And then it builds and they do more things and habits change. So, mm-hmm. And that continual effort, like when they start, when people start to feel good, that's the drug. Yeah. They're like, oh, wait. Or they might go through a period where they're like, well, now I kind of hurt more. And I'm like, you don't. You're just more aware. Yes. Right. right. Oh, God, yeah. You're just more yes. aware. Totally. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes I get adjusted four times a month. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's two, and sometimes I pop in here and I'm like, my ribs out, someone put it back in. Right. Like Zach fixed me, was that last week? Yeah. So oh jealous. my God. It was mm-hmm. like. It's juicy. It was, it was heaven. Mm. But I had the awareness because I've invested in my own healing that I knew exactly what I needed and I knew where I could go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can tell when people have gone through their journey versus yep. the ones who haven't. You're yep. like, ooh, we got some work to do. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that would be like. I just, I couldn't express how important that is to have a team. Yeah. yeah. And you deserve a team. You deserve yeah. a team. That's key. Yeah. You deserve a key. team, Richie. You guys deserve a team. We do. We all do. Yes. I'm on team yeah. Richie, so. I know. Me too. He's I like, the best. I like Richie's team. I like team Richie. I know. He's Thanks, guys. Oh. When you came in, Filling like when bucket. you were first yeah. here, I remember thinking, who's that guy? <laughs> who's this beach? Be- because like your energy was so like intoxicating and like oh. vibrant. Mm-hmm. He's just curious little so cookie sweet. over there. I am I am curious like a cat. My mm-hmm. f- friends call me Whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Does your wife oh get mad gosh. that you took her nickname? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cat, she loves that. You, you're you're watching, maybe. <laughs> no, yeah. no way. <laughs> no way. She's not making it 35 minutes in. Oh, yeah. That's... Um, I think we should do a part two if uh-huh. you'd want to, Britt. Sometime. Yeah, this is like super fun. I think there's so many things to There's talk so about. many things. I really so... want you to kind of cook over in your new space and then like hear about that. Oh, so maybe yeah, it's like two or three idea. parts. 
Yeah, yeah and I but, also, I would love to do more sharing if, like, your viewers are interested in, like, auras and angels and, yes. like, how I witness that and what that is like. Yes. Like, sometimes yeah. you're in, when you come into my room, you're entering a different dimension. It is a healing space. So mm -hmm. your angels will come in. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think I'm just supposed to tell you that they're there. But sometimes they give me messages. <laughs> yeah. But then also, like... When they come in during sessions, I don't say it out loud, but I'll quietly in my head go, all right, I see you here. Please come help me, like assist yeah. me. Because I know that like this healing is bigger than what I can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I will take all the support I can get. Yeah. Oh, awesome. God, it's so cool. How do, they, to that. how do they find you? How does somebody is find like a, you? Is there like a phone book? <laughs> yellow pages? It's the yellow pages. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm on Instagram at the happy healer 1111. That's is that all of your social medias? Yep. The same same name. Yep. That's pretty much it. And then the happy healer dot com is your website. Great it's, website. It's actually www dot Brittany Graft oh. dot who's, com. Who's that? Got it. That's her. Oh, okay. Sorry. So mm -hmm. uh oh. Knocks oh, on the door. So okay. all right. That's a wrap. Thanks, guys. That um, was a blast. Ooh, on the tap. Shit. That's a wrap on the tap. Wrap, wrap on, on the, the tap. tap. Woo! Sweet. Peace. All right. next time. Thank you. Thanks, viewers. This is the house of Planet Doctors. You're not a doctor. I wish I